Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Awesome. Uh, so I'm Johnny Goldstein, and fantastic to be here. And I just want you to repeat after me. When I say, TED, well, when I say TEDx Pittsburgh, I want you to just say power. So TEDx Pittsburgh. Power. TEDx Pittsburgh. Power. And let's do a really powerful one. TEDx Pittsburgh. Power. power. All right. That's what I'm talking about. So um, I'm going to be talking about power here. Uh, but real quick, I need one more thing from you. Raise your hand if you've lived in five or more places. Okay. Uh, put down your, uh, so keep your hand up if you've lived uh, 10 or more places. Wow. Put your hand up if you've lived 15 or more places. I'm amazed you've kept track. That's great. So we've got a few nomads here. And what I'm going to talk about is a nomadic view of power. So. Nomads, I don't have a camel, but I'm kind of a global nomad myself, like some of the other people here. And uh, nomads are very sensitive to power because we're always going into new environments, new situations. So these are some things that I've learned in, in, in my sojourns. The red dots there are places I've lived substantial periods of time, and the blue dots are places that I've traveled to and, and spent a bit of time also. So uh, this is coming for that perspective. I started out in that little over there in Oregon, the other rain belt, water belt, uh, where it rained all the time. And I thought, hey, this is reality. I am powerless. I'm just moist. That's the way it is. <laughs> so that's what it was like, you know, two years old, three years old, four years old. And then one day we took a trip over the mountains into eastern Oregon where it's sunny all the time. I realized the power change your location, change your reality. So that stuck with me. And uh, my parents like to travel. My dad took a job in the United Kingdom. I was there in first grade. I said a very normal thing to, uh, for an American kid to another kid. I told him, hey, shut up. Apparently, that is not <laughs> like what you say in a two-room schoolhouse in rural England. So I learned there <laughs> the power of cultural context. I can still hear her voice. <laughs> You are such a rude little boy. Ms. Trimby, she's a terrifying four foot eight lady. Um, so when I was at 15, my dad took a job in Papua New Guinea. He's an economist. They don't have a lot of homegrown talent there. And we were at a, uh, we were at a, a dance competition. People was in, this guy was in his tribal regalia. I took his picture. The going rate's 50 cents to take the picture at this type of event. He wanted $5. I gave him the 50 cents because everyone knew that's the going rate. He didn't run me through with a spear. That's the power of transparent pricing. <laughs> uh, I went to college in Colorado. I did a little bit of rock climbing there, as people do. And uh, I wasn't very skillful. I would just power my way up as well as I could. And that got me so far. But every once in a while, I would get to a rock face that was just beyond that brute force approach. And someone with less brute force but superior skill would dance on past me up the, up, the, up the edge of the cliff. That's the power of technique. Uh, I lived in Israel in the early 90s. A lot of uh, Russian people from the former Soviet Union flooding in there at that time. And I would say, you know, ma, 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 uh, what are you going to do? And they said, well, we're going we're gonna to study computer science. And I said, oh, OK, whatever. A few years later, Israel's number two in startups, number two in listed companies on the Na NASDAQ, seven and a half out of eight. In the last 10 years, they've outperformed the US. These people had the power of insight. And they, they knew what to study in that place to make it happen. I moved to New York City, as many artists do. Uh, I studied visual art, uh, uh, video art, stand-up comedy. And I got, I was just amazed at how fast I improved. So what's the power of New York? It's critical mass. There are a lot of people there. There are a lot of peers pushing you. There's a lot of audiences. And that, you know, you learn, you perform, you get better. The power of critical mass. Uh, I was traveling. I didn't live in Florida, but I was traveling down there. I was in Palm Beach. Clinton was doing a fundraiser. And he was president still. And uh, I couldn't get within more than three blocks of, of the hotel where he was doing it. There was that kind of bubble around the president. And I realized what, what, how isolated 
power can make you. It's the power to isolate. Power can isolate. Yes, it might give you power, but at what cost? It's made me think about power in a different way. Pittsburgh, what about Pittsburgh? I moved to Pittsburgh about a year ago, and Pittsburgh is a, a, a region, the area, experienced a huge blow with the industrial shift and the riptides of the 70s. And in Pittsburgh, I've seen the power of getting up, rebuilding, rethinking, and that's an awesome kind of power. That I'm, I'm honored to be in the kind of shadow of that power. So I think being a nomad's valuable. It gives you valuable perspective. You can be a nomad even if you live in one place. If you just explore different realities, go to a different church, read a different kind of book, sleep in a, a different room in your house for a change, and see what that's like, what different perceptions that gives you. All you have to do is observe, reflect, repeat, explore, keep it going. Thank you very much. Thank you.